আমরা শুরু করি ইনশাল্লাহ আমরা যা কিছু অর্জন করি জীবনে that uh, we are achieve, able to achieve whatever we achieve and so praise is for allah so, uh, i i want to, i thought that uh, we have been talking about prophecies in the quran or we talked about prophecies in the quran uh, 11 weeks ago 12 weeks ago two uh, sessions on prophecies in the quran and uh, nine sessions on prophecies in ahadith Uh, it, these have had tremendous impact in me especially and i'm sure it has had tremendous impact in all of you i'll explain the tremendous impact towards the end and i thought that uh, when we go over them in the form of summary in couple of sessions then that will have even more impact but as i <clears throat> as i finished the summary i found that i won't be able to do them Uh, the summary of 11 sessions in uh, two sessions it's it, it's just not possible to present it, it would be superfluous it will not have the desired impact and uh, think it will it will need three sessions three sessions will be more than good enough without rushing uh, there's no need to rush we don't have a syllabus and an exam to take at the end of a certain period so uh, we 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 rather Uh, try to get the maximum benefit we can by not uh, uh, speeding up uh, haste is from shaitan so there's no need to haste here uh, and uh, I'll, i'll finish in three sessions inshallah today mostly uh, prophecies from the quran on which we spent uh three sessions uh two sessions so i'll finish in one session and possibly we'll have some time to get into prophecies fulfilled prophecies i should use the term fulfilled prophecies um from quran and uh, we'll get into fulfilled prophecies from ahadith uh towards the end inshallah i'll try to so that we can finish the fulfilled prophecies from ahadith 43 sections in two sessions and uh, 20 sections of fulfilled prophecies from the quran in one uh, in one session these are not the ideas these are are events foretold which were uh, fulfilled uh, during uh, during much before our uh, we came into the world much before that and the prophecies in the quran many are um, about the end of times so those are some some have been fulfilled some have not been fulfilled so if these were ideas then you could uh, summarize them in the form of gist these are not ideas these are uh, events that were foretold and so it is difficult to s- s- squeeze them in in uh, in uh, in a session or two so prophecies in the quran uh, there are about 20 of the, the we talked about 20 of them so let's uh, start with the first one the abode of abu lahab you know in uh, surah lahab and this one i don't need to take much time uh, we talked about it and then we know about it also even before i mentioned uh, that uh, it, when when abu lahab after rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made the first sermon 
I mean, very short sermon. He gave warning, <coughs> warning to uh, the Quraysh standing on 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 um, Mount Safa, and um, he gave the first warning. And Abu Lahab said, uh, 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 you, you, uh, "May your hands perish, O oh, Muhammad! May your hands perish." This is for what you called us. And then Allah Taala revealed Surah Lahab. Tabbat yada Abi Lahab yang watab ma agna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. Allah Taala said, um, oh, "May the hands of Abu Lahab be ruined." And then Allah says, "It's not may." He says, "And ruined is he. His wealth will not avail him, or that which he gain, he will burn in a fire, a blazing flame, lahab." And uh, the point is that after this, Abu Lahab lived for eleven, twelve years. He died uh, right after the Battle of Badr. But he died in in Mecca, sitting in Mecca, as we know. Uh, uh, so he got 10, 11 years to disprove the Quran. Even out of uh, deception, he could have tried to disprove the Quran. I have accepted Islam. He could not do that. Allah knew he would not be able to do that. So it was a prophecy fulfilled. And uh, there is also, you know, Vamratu, Sayasla Naranzata, Vamratu, Hammalatal Hatab, that Allah Ta'ala is saying that his, his wife will, be, will perish. Uh, uh, and uh, she will burn in fire. She also could not uh, discredit uh, the Quran. And there are other things associated with this uh, with this uh, surah. In another hal halakha, I took uh, three, four sessions to explain all those 45 minutes each. And uh, yeah, we are summarizing what we discussed earlier in a little more detail. Byzantines will rebound. Uh, the Byzantines, and this is in surah room, Alif Lam Mim Ghulibati Rum. The Byzantines have been defeated in the nearest land, but they, after their defeat, will triumph within three to nine years, and that happened. And uh, what is uh, amazing is uh, that from 613 A.D. to 619 A.D., the Byzantines were absolutely decimated, decimated, destroyed by the Persian Empire. The Christians were massacred and churches burned. In his book, The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Edward Gibbon says at the time when this prediction is said to have been delivered, no prophecy could be more distant from its accomplishment because, uh, because the Byzantines were absolutely decimated. Uh, but Allah Ta'ala is saying that they will come back and they did come back. I mean, I mean, Territory after territory of the Byzantines were, were captured by the uh, uh, by the enemy. Not long after Heraclius led the Byzantine crusade like a dagger into the heart of the Persian Empire, fulfilling the amazing prophecy in six to eight years. Allah says in the Quran, three to nine years, in six to eight years, it was fulfilled. The verses that immediately follow this prediction refers to, and that is uh, uh, in Surah Rom, verses four and five, uh, refers to triumph against the Makkan oppressors in the Battle of Badr. News of conquest of Makkah, the Quranic verses which were revealed following the conclusion of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah described it as a manifest victory. Though the Muslims did not consider it as a victory, they considered it as, as an insult to them. Allah's, Allah said that it was a victory for them. And also Allah Ta'ala gave the believers the decisive glad tiding of the conquest of Makkah. In uh, verse uh, Surah number 48, verse number 27, Allah Ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah will fulfill his messenger's vision in all truth. Allah willing, you will surely enter the sacred mosque in Makkah in security, some with heads shaved and others with hair shortened. Uh, the, the details of the, of the uh, prophecy, uh, without fear. A new uh, prediction, prophecies from the prophet, and this is prediction in the Quran, without fear. He knew what you did not know. 
So he first granted you the triumph at hand. One year later, the Muslims performed the minor pilgrimage and the year after they conquered Makkah. And uh, Allah's promise of victory, you know, there are, I will not go through the verses. In Surah An-Nur, Allah Ta'ala promises victory. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah Ta'ala promises victory. In Surah An-Nasr, Allah Ta'ala promises victory. The first verse was revealed at the time of the Muslims' weakness, promising the righteous victory. And the second, predicting the people's entering into Islam in crowds. And so it came to pass, it happened after the capture of Makkah and in the time of the Khalifas Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali, so that Islam was established from Spain to parts of China in mere 20 years. Spain to China in those days when there was no mechanized army in mere 20 years. This in part fulfills another prophecy of the Quran. It is he who has sent the messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to make it triumphant over all religions. At the present rate of growth, Islam will overtake Christianity by 2025 as per some prediction. Also in the Quran, in Surah Al-Fat, Allah Ta'ala mentions, and I will not go over the verse, about the conquest of Makkah again. And in Surah, uh, in, uh, in Surah, in the same Surah, in the next verse, Allah, uh, verse number 19, Allah Ta'ala mentions about the victory in the Battle of Khaybar. And in the following verse, in the same surah, Allah Ta'ala mentions uh, uh, about successive victories after Khaybar. And in the next, uh, uh, sorry, in the next ayat, so I, I mentioned surah, but it's the same surah, ayat 18, 19, 20, 21. And in ayat 21, Allah Ta'ala mentions about, and, and, and the scholars say that it's most probably reference to the conquest of Makkah. And that the body of Firaun will be uh, preserved. Allah Ta'ala also mentioned that after he and his army was destroyed in the Red Sea, pursuing Musa salam and Bani Israel. And Allah Ta'ala says, today we shall preserve your body that you may be a sign to those after you. Although most men give no heed to our signs. Most men, Allah is saying, and that's, the, that's what we see today, out of 800 million people, uh, vast majority, more than 600, uh, so sorry, out of 8 billion people, 800 crore people, vast majority, 600, more than 600 crore people just do not heed the Quran. The dead body of Firaun was later found floating on the western shores of Sinai Peninsula and preserved in a museum as sign for people. Skin bearing witness, uh, Allah Ta'ala says, they will, ask the, uh, they will ask their skins, why did you bear witness against us? The skins will reply, Allah gave us speech as he gave speech to all others. And then Allah Ta'ala says, their skins will bear witness against them as to what they have been doing. This is evidently uh, on the day of judgment that Allah Ta'ala will give the skin and the mouth and the hands and the feet the ability to speak, to bear witness against us. Uh, but in this world also, Allah Ta'ala has fulfilled that promise that there are fingerprints and other forms of identification uh, that have been found by human beings inspired by Allah Ta'ala. And so the fulfill fulfillment of these verses are also in this world. And the fulfillment of other similar verses which refer to uh, the hereafter actually on the day of judgment uh, are also fulfilled in this world, uh, in this life. For example, uh, in uh, at Takwir, Surah number 81, verse number four, Allah Ta'ala says, and when full term she camels are neglected, and in Surah 16, verse 8, Allah Ta'ala says, and he creates many things for you that you do not even know about. So as we know, people, especially living in deserts, have now abandoned 
that is the first surah on this slide, camels and other animals for traveling. And this prophecy of invention and emergence of new transport systems is an ongoing process. Zoos, again, a verse which uh, uh, refers to what will happen on the day of judgment when the wild beasts are gathered together. And Allah Ta'ala is mentioning about wild beasts because domesticated animals, they stand beside us. But wild beasts, they live in a different, completely different environment in the jungle. And especially in those days, you know, there, there were no zoos. But the fulfillment of this prediction uh, is in this world in the form of wild beasts gathered together in zoos. And nobody could have imagined that there would be zoos uh, in open parks. Modern uh, communication systems. And when the souls appeared, and again, it is going to happen on the day of judgment. And when the various people are brought together, these are two different translations of the same verse, uh, verse number seven of uh, Aktakvir. Fast transportation systems, telephone satellite systems and social media and the internet and Zoom have brought people together so close to each other, proving the truthfulness of the prediction in the Quran. And especially so in the world of pandemic. Air traffic system, Allah Ta'ala says, in Surah 51, verse 7, by the heaven containing pathways, while prophesizing, prophesying about modern transportation systems, Quran also foretold the air traffic system, which actually creates pathways in the sky and is an essential part of uh, modern aviation and airplane transportation. Oceans linked, nobody could have imagined in those days that oceans would be linked through and rather going through all of it, uh, through Suez Canal and Panama Canal, but they have been done. And uh, that is uh, foretold in the Quran that oceans will be linked. And also, you know, uh, as you can see in the picture that oceans will, will stay separate. Uh, what is that, this one, between them is a barrier. So neither of them transgress the blue water and the green water, they don't mix with each other. And uh, he who has released simultaneously the two seeds, bodies of water. So the meeting of seas, uh, linking of oceans was not or could not have been uh, conceived in uh, or imagined in those days. And the Quran also mentions about or, or refers to uh, genetic engineering that is to come and that came during our time in uh, surah number four verse 119 Allah Ta'ala says and part of it is so they will change the creation of Allah and that is genetic engineering plastic surgery genetic engineering and cloning in this short and concise statement pollution is also referred to in the Quran corruption has appeared throughout the land and see by reason of what the hands of people have earned, so he may let them taste part of the consequence of what they have done, that perhaps they will return to righteousness. So the word corruption, which uh, specially implies shamelessness and sin, uh, also may mean pollution. One of the interpretations of the above verse of the Holy Quran is the environmental pollution caused by human beings. In roads in mountains, uh, again, this verse uh, in Surah Taqweer, verse number three, uh, which refers to what will happen uh, uh, before the day of judgment. That means the mountains are moved. Mountains are moved, set in motion. So uh, that, destruction of the mountains has also been caused in this world uh, well before our time, over 120 years ago by uh, uh, Mr. Alfred Nobel through the discovery 
or invention of dynamite. That mountains are blown up or roads are made through the mountains. So mountains are moved. That uh, prediction for the hereafter is also fulfilled or has also been fulfilled in this, in this life. Extraterrestrial life is also uh, referred in the Quran in the in Surah number 42, verse 29. Among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the creatures he has spread in them. He has spread in them. So it doesn't mean when he uses the term spread, it doesn't mean only in the earth. It has to mean spread in them, which, uh, which uh, follows what has been said before, the heavens and the earth. That means in other planets or other heavenly bodies. He's powerful to assemble them whenever he so wills. Having discourse with aliens is still an unrealized dream, but science is progressing in that direction. Establishment of Israel. In Surah 17, verse 105, Allah Ta'ala says, and we said after him, that is Pharaoh, after he was destroyed, to the children of Israel, dwell in the land. And when there comes the promise, that is appointment of the hereafter, that means before the hereafter, we will bring you forth in one gathering out of various people, in one place out of various people. Creation of Israel and gathering of Shepherdic Ashkenazi and the Jews of many other different races in Israel proves the authenticity of this prophecy and hence the Quran. And of those before you, I, I am bypassing this for the sake of time. Here Allah Ta'ala says that he has destroyed those who came before you, uh, those, he, those he deemed uh, should be destroyed. And after this verse was revealed, he has destroyed so many other nations, even, even within Muslims. He has destroyed uh, parts of, of uh, Muslim civilization and obviously non-Muslims. So it, it goes for what happened before it was revealed and what happened after it was revealed. And tidings of the last day, there are many uh, predictions or, or many statements in the Quran as to what is going to happen before the last day. I, I want to, considerable part of the Quran is devoted to that, to that, that the world will be destroyed and rebuilt again and how the dead will be raised, assembled in the place of mustering and after being judged, will go either to paradise or hell. The Quran also gives a vivid description of paradise and hell and the life in them. Women's rights, um, I will bypass that one. And uh, Surah Kaufa, which should have come after Surah Lahab uh, in, in order of, uh, of how they happened, how these uh, predictions happened. But I, 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 this came to my mind um, later on. So that's why I, I'm following the same sequence as we followed during uh, the presentations earlier. So in Surah Kawsar, Allah Ta'ala says, Auzubillahimina shaitan ji bismillah rahman rahim, inna akayna kal kawthar. Verily, we shall, we shall bless on you abundance. And Allah Ta'ala said that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the depths of depression, actually, from loss of wealth, from loss of wealth, and followers, very few followers in a in, uh, number of years at that point. And uh, two of his children died one after another and uh, in their infancy. And, and the persecution, uh, relentless persecution. The first three years was in sec was secret preaching. And after that, when it became open, after uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, uh, gave the warning in, uh, in uh, Mount uh, Safa, uh, persecution started from, uh, from then on. And uh, Allah Ta'ala revealed, indeed, we have granted you abundant goodness. Kausar has many, uh, many translations, different translations. So the, the 
the simple translation is uh, will give you abundance will give you abundance and obviously it is in in terms of goodness so abundant goodness we have granted you allah ta'ala had not granted at that time he's he's uh, foretelling it that we will grant you uh, but he is saying as if he has already granted and um, we know quite a bit about what allah ta'ala granted him in terms of uh, abundance or status and honor and position and uh, uh, territory during his lifetime and followers during his lifetime and wealth uh, coming to his feet and he rejecting it during his lifetime and followers and uh, and um, uh, the, the persecution was wiped out after the after the conquest of makkah so so uh, and and whatever followed up until uh, for the next 1400 years in terms of followers from a small uh, place in makkah to a, to another little enlarged place in medina to throughout arabia and then throughout the what we call nowadays middle east and then it spread all the way to to the shores of Bay of Bengal and to China and to other parts of the world and now to America and to Australia and to, to the uh, Scandinavia and uh, to the south as, as south as South Africa. So he, the, the, uh, his followers are everywhere. And uh, the, the abundance that Allah Ta'ala will bestow on him in the hereafter, uh, then we know quite a bit about that so i i won't go get into the details of uh, the meaning of of what kawthar implies but it implies a lot and i had I, in another another talim session i had to take at least seven i think seven sessions similar sessions on explaining the uh, yeah, the, the abundance that allah Ta'ala had given to rasulullah or has given to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophecies from ahadith uh, again, uh, there are a large number of, uh, of prophecies. Uh, it came to about uh, 43 sections. I'll, I'll, I'll not go over each one of them. Uh, I'll, I'll simply start with the first one. Globalization of Islam. You know, um, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this matter will certainly, certainly, reach every place touched by the night and day. And what he means by this matter is Islam. So wherever the sun shines, Islam will spread. Allah will not leave a house of mud or even far, except that Allah will cause this religion to enter it, whether it is White House or the Kremlin, by which the honorable will be honored and the disgraceful will be disgraced. Whoever will accept will get honor. And whoever will reject will be disgraced. Allah will honor the honorable and Islam with Islam. And he will disgrace the disgraceful with unbelief. And you see, the uh, television and other media have, have so many negative uh, aspects. But one of the aspects is it is reaching to every home. It is taking to every home the message of Islam at the same time. And if you accept, you are successful. If you reject, you are unsuccessful. These, and uh, I think uh, Tawheed posted uh, that there are 4,000 4, plus religions in the world. I forgot the exact number. I didn't read it carefully. Uh, 4,000 plus religions, and we are fortunate. We are fortunate. And that is just because we were born to Muslim families, Muslim mothers and fathers, that we are Muslims. But just because we are Muslims, born to Muslim families, does not mean that we automatically become Muslims unless we practice unless we learn, practice, and propagate. My father was an engineer. I'm not an engineer, because I was not trained to be so. My father was a Muslim. I will not be a Muslim if I'm not trained 
be a Muslim and practice as a Muslim. These predictions were made at a time when Muslims were a powerless handful and Islam was expected to be buried in its cradle that makes the predictions miraculous. Rasulullah was undeterred, was not stopped or limited by time and distance. He, um, be before the Battle of Badr, Rasulullah showed us, Umar says, where those enemies would die at Badr, he, he pointed out two spots. This is where Abu Lahab will be killed. This is where uh, Walid will be killed. This is where Shaiba will be killed. This is where, uh, what is the other name? Um, uh, Utbah will be killed and so on. He mentioned about at least seven uh, of the Quraysh. And Umar who says that after the Battle of Badr, we found that all these people about whom Rasulullah pointed spaces in the ground, they were exactly in those spots, not a little to the left or right or front or back, exactly in those spots. And he says, I swear by the one who sent him with the truth, none of them fell other than exactly where Rasulullah's hand had touched. Muslim and Abu Dawud. Anas was the Allah one who reported that as the battle of Muta or Mauta was taking place in Jordan, about over 600 miles from Medina, Rasulullah had not joined the battle. So he informed the people in Medina of the martyrdom. So he said, uh, the flag is in the hand of Zaid bin Harisa, and then it is in the hands of Jafar bin Abu Talib. And then it is in the hands of Abdullah bin Rawaha. And then it is in the hands of a lion of Allah. Uh, Walid, uh, Khalid bin Walid, Khalid bin Walid. And Allah Ta'ala made the Muslims victorious through him. And the army came later and the companions sitting in Medina who heard the running commentary from Rasulullah found that it exactly happened as he said, as he prophesied, uh, sorry, as he said. And uh, another one, I'm not talking about all of them in this section. Uh, uh, after a battle, uh, the companions were talking about a particular, a very brave companion uh, he defeated everybody who faced him on that day. Nobody showed more valor than him. And so everybody was praising him. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he will be a person of the hellfire. And one companion followed him, shadowed him, and found that he committed suicide. In, in, in a few days. So that was again a fulfillment of the prophecy of, of what came out of the mouth of Rasulullah. What we sometimes see is not the reality, but the illusion. In this section, there's mention of six prophecies. Six in a sequence. And this was during the Battle of Tabuk. Rasulullah said to Auf bin Malik, anhu, count six signs before the hour. My death, the conquest of Jerusalem, a mortal plague that will take you in great numbers as the plague of sheep depletes them. And wealth will be in such surplus that a man will be given a hundred gold coins and still be unsatisfied. So this plague that he is mentioning about that happened uh, at the time of Umar Razi Allah in, uh, in a city in Syria, where it is reported that 25,000 Muslims, including Abu Ubaidah, the commander uh, in, in that city, uh, he also was uh, became a martyr. 
and uh, wealth will be in surplus. So this was at the time of Uthman who, when there was a great stride in conquests, Muslim conquests. So that was also fulfilled. Then there will be a detribulation that will not leave an Arab home without entering it. And scholars say this refers to the killing of or martyrdom of Uthman anhu by rebels. It affected every Arab home because uh, nobody could dream that a Khalifa would be killed like this or martyred like this through opposition by a group. Then there will be a truce between you, the Muslims and Banu al-Asfar, Byzantines, which they will betray and march against you under 80 flags. And under each flag will be 12,000 soldiers. And scholars say that this one is yet to be fulfilled. Counting the conquests. The Surah foretold a multitude of Muslim conquests, including those of Rome, Persia, Egypt, Yemen, India, and Constantinople. Jabir bin Abdullah who reports that while digging the trench outside Medina to repel an approaching army, that means the Quraysh, a massive boulder obstructed them that no ax would break. I could summarize this even more, but this is so uh, amazing, the details of it. So I, I, I rather go over it. While time running out and with people's fears and hunger eating away at them, Rasulullah walked over and picked up the ax. He said, Bismillah in Allah's name and hammered the boulder, reducing a chunk of it to rubble. He said, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys to Sham. Now that much is possible to predict. But then he says, I can see the red palaces at this very moment. He's being so precise. Then he shattered another chunk and said, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys to Persia. I can see Madain's white palace. He had been to Sham, Syria, on business, but he had not been to Persia. But he's mentioning about Madain's white palace. One can say, oh, he, he uh, heard about white palaces. But then what about the prophecy? At that time, when Muslims were fighting for their, or struggling for their survival, to be able to predict that they will, uh, they will conquer uh, Syria and they will conquer uh, Persia, and then they will conquer Yemen and so on and so forth, that is, that is, uh, unimaginable. So third, he shattered the last chunk and said, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys to Yemen. By Allah, I can see the gates of Sana at this very moment from here. No falsehood comes out of his mouth. Regarding Egypt, Abu Dhar narrated, Rasulullah said, you will certainly conquer Egypt. And that happened. And there were, there, there were more details that I left out. Regarding Constantinople, Rasulullah determined that it would become a Muslim land nearly a millennium, 800 years prior to that happening. So I will stop at uh, section four uh, and uh, make a few remarks, and then we will pray. So here there session at say. আমরা ওটা জুড়ে যাই ইমাম নববীর 40টা হাদিসের যে বই আছে 40 আহাদিস তার থেকে 17 নম্বর হাদিস সম্বন্ধে তাওহিদ আলোচনা করবে যদি আসসালামু আলাইকুম বিসমিল্লাহির রহমানির রহিম আলহামদুলিল্লাহি রাব্বিল আলামিন আসসালাতু ওয়াসসালামু আশরাফুল আনবিয়া ওয়াল মুরসালিন ওয়া আলা আলিহি ওয়া সাবি আজমাঈন Allahumma inni asaluka ilman nafiyah Rabbi yassir wa la tuassir wa tammim bil kair Rabbi zidni ilma Bismillah, Bismillah Abar, We join together in this meeting So let's uh, uh, say Alhamdulillah to Alhamdulillah. our uh, 
So the, today we'll discuss hadith number 17. This hadith number 17, we can call it, it's a hadith of Ihsan, hadith of excellence, hadith of excellence. So this hadith has been narrated by uh, Abi Yala Shaddad ibn Aus. So uh, we'll go through the hadith slowly and maybe uh, to keep the time limited, I will continue on the next week also on the same hadith. So let's try to start and let's see how far it can go. Let me read the hadith from in Arabic first. An Abi Yala Shadda Dibini Ausin Radiallahu Anhu An Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam call. إن الله كتب الإحسان على كل شيء فإذا قتلتم فحسنوا كتلة فإذا جها جبهاتم فإذا جبهاتم فأحسن أح فحسنوا جهبا و you hit the while you hit the ahadukum shafara tahu while you re jabihata while you re jabihata. So Rawa Rawa ul Muslim. This hadith is from Muslim, it's not mentioned in Bukhari. This is Sahih hadith. So if we read the translation. Uh, narrated by Abi Yala Shabdat ibn Awas radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah has dictated excellence for everything and so when we kill we do the killing with excellence when slaughter perform the slaughter excellently well and let any of you sharpen the knife and let him put in put the animal at ease so that is the hadith the first part of the hadith is talking about ihsan the concept of ihsan uh, and the second part uh, in the hadith they put up an uh, example with the uh, with the kindness with the kindness towards the animal even when we are going to slaughter it so let us let us learn about the narrator first. So Abi Yala, Abi Yala, Abi Yala is Kunia. So Yala is a name of his son. So Abi Yala Shaddad, the, uh, the narrator is actually Shaddad Ibn Aus. So his father was Sabit Al Ansari. He is from the Aus uh, family tribe from Medina, and uh, his father was a famous Sabi who muttered in the battle of Uhud and this Abi Yala was uh, after Hijri, after Hijrat, Abi Yala was, uh, Abi Yala Shaddad was uh, uh, paired together with Usman radiallahu anhu. So we know that last time all the uh, Muhajirin and Ansar was paired together to guide in the new land. So, Abi Yala Shatra radiallahu anhu was paired together with Usman radiallahu Ufran ibn Affan radiallahu anhu and they were very close from that time. One of his uncle, Hassan bin Tabit, he was a poet and very famous poet in very early Islamic era. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam predicted about him, he predicted about him, about his leadership. And this uh, this Sahabi radiallahu anhu became a Khalifa, became a, a governor in the Sham in Syria during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. He narrated 50 hadiths and he was known for his wisdom, he was known for his knowledge and also his hill. So he has a very excellent character. He uh, one of the uh, one of the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Hill, so he uh, he was famous for that. So after the demise of uh, Usman Ibn Affan, he uh, he 
uh, this Sahabi, he actually withdraw himself from any political activity and uh, retired in the Baitul Muqaddis in Jerusalem and died there. So uh, the last part of the, his life, he remained, he maintained a very low profile life with not, not much activity. So this is all in his uh, uh, important issue of his life. So let's look in the hadith now. So this concept of Isan, we learned this concept of Isan in the hadith of Jibril, if we remember. And there's a third question in the hadith of Jibril when Jibril asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Fa akh biruni Fa akh biruni anil ihsan What is this? Jibreel asked Rasulullah and Rasulullah sallallahu answered In In ta'budullaha ka annaka tarahu Meaning when we when we when we pray, we must assume we must think that Allah we are we are seeing Allah. We are seeing Allah as if we are seeing Allah. And then, fa illam takunu tarahu. If we cannot see Allah, fa innahu taraka, fa innahu yaraka. Then assume that uh, Allah is seeing us. Allah is seeing us. So that was the definition given in Hadith number two, Jibril, Jib, Hadith Jibril, about Isan. And these two events, or these two action, or these two, uh, what to say, these two situation is comparable with the concept of Mushahada and mu, Murakaba. Mushahada and Murakaba. Mushahada is a state. Mushahada is a state when uh, it's the highest level when uh, we see Allah, when we see Allah, we, when we, as if we see Allah, not that we really see Allah, but as if we see Allah. And we actually do not see Allah with our eyes, but we see Allah with the eye of our heart. So it is important to keep our heart spotless, no black dots. We, if we can recall that, we say that when we do any uh, unlawful or doubtful work, action, then our heart has a dot, uh, our heart is a dot, black dot. And when we do a good job, righteous job, the black dot is removed with a white spot. So to see Allah, we must have this clean heart, no, without any black dots. So this is actually this is actually the level of ambiya. This, this is actually the level of Ambiya. Actually, uh, in this state, in this state, who reach in this state of Mushahada, they are totally, uh, totally uh, away from dunya. They don't feel lonely. They don't feel sad. They even don't feel hungry or tired. And this is not for normal human being. They are not at all concerned with the matters of dunya. And scholars say, when Allah removed the, uh, remo uh, scholars say that Allah removed the veil between the Ambiya and Allah, so that they can see Allah more clearly than normal people. But the Murakaba, Murakaba is a high state for normal people. So when we do, when we Con, uh, contemplate on our action, when you take accounts of our action, when you judge ourselves, when you purify our uh, our nafs, that is the state we call about Murakaba. And this state is uh, comparable with as if we are seeing, uh, Allah is seeing at us. Allah is seeing at us. This, so this is the uh, first definition of Isan that we got from this Hadith book of Imam Nabibi 40 hadith. All right. So we also discussed before that what is the status of 
Isan Islam. We say that Iman is the floor of Islam. And Islam is the side wall of the deen. Islam is the side wall of the deen. And Isan is the roof. So when these three things combine, floor, side wall, and roof, we, we get a uh, normal house. But without any of it, without any of it, the house is not complete. But most important part is, of course, Iman, that is floor. And of course, next is side wall. And the house is made beautified, out has been beautified with the roof of Isan. So that is the status of Isan in Islam. All right. So we just uh, try to understand the concept of Islam, uh, Isan. Now let's look in detail. Isan is actually doing things in a tasteful manner. Often, often translated as excellence. But the meaning of Isan is much deeper than the excellence. So we'll try to understand that. So if we uh, look at the Surah Nahal, verse number 90, verse number 90, it says, Inna laha ya muru bil adli wal ihsani wal wal littabai zil kurba wa wal yanha fahshai wal munkari wal bagi. So meaning Allah enjoined justice and ihsan. Allah enjoyed justice and ihsan and giving help to relatives, kings, and forbidding immorality and bad conduct and oppression. So here you see uh, uh, the, the word Isan is put next to Adal, justice. After justice, the, uh, the Isan is put next to it in the rank. So. So, in all our action, in all our action, the Isan itself is not an action, not an action, but in all our action, we can apply Isan. We can apply Isan. So, so Isan actually means something like completeness in condition of pillar and obligation as well as correctness in accordance to the Sunnah of Rasulullah. So we'll try to understand this, uh, this uh, few words more clearly. So is, we we'll try to understand that Isan itself is not an action, but it is the completeness of any action. It is the completeness of any action. Without Isan, our, all our actions is not really complete. So let us look at the Hadith now, Hadith text of Hadith. The first line of the Hadith say, Inna laha katabal ihsana ala kulli shayin. Inna laha kataba. Means Allah has written down, kataba is written down. Ihsana. Allah has written down ihsan ala kulli shayin on everything. Allah has written down kata, uh, uh, ihsan on everything. So this word kataba has been used in Quran many times and for important matters. Let us look at few of the uh, few of the verses in Quran, the Surah Baqarah, verse number one hundred seventy-eight. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu kutiba alaykumul kisas. So you remember what is kisas? Kisas is a judicial system that uh, when a man kill another man, there's a life for life, hand for hand, eyes for eyes. So that is the principle of kisas. So. Allah Ta'ala is using the word Kutiba alaikumul kisas. Kutiba is a passive form of kataba. Kutiba is a passive form of kataba. So, by Kutiba, Allah Ta'ala made kisas obligatory. So, this word kataba actually where used. All the uh, action or all the event mentioned under after kataba is actually obligatory in the same surah 
verse number 180. Kutiba alai kumul. Kutiba alai kumul. Iza hadara ahada kumul mauta. La taraka kairu wasia. So this word, this ayat is talking about miras. That is, if anybody die with uh, with uh, with a uh, property or with a property left behind, then kutiba alaikumul zul hadara ahadaku mauta. If anybody die with a property left, then Midas law is made obligatory. So again, Kutipa is used to, Kutipa word is used to show obligation. And same, in verse number 83 in Surah Bakara also, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, Kutipa alaikumusiyamu kama, Kutipa alallazina min koblakum. So here also the verse say, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O believer, Kutiba alaikumul siyam. The uh, the siyam has been made obligatory upon you, like it has it was made obligatory before. The uh, it was made obligatory for the people before you. So again, kutiba is used for obligation. So in this word, when we say that inna Allah kataba al ihsana ala kulli shayin, so it shows that. Isan is obligatory. Isan is obligatory. It's not optional. All right. So we understand this part. Isan is obligatory. Uh, we may continue a little bit more. So it follows that Isan is wajib. It's not sunnah. It's not sunnah. So let's talk about certain principle. It talks about always when we study a hadith, we try to derive the principle so that we can. Uh, use this principle in different situation. All right. So we will derive some principle from here also. Let us uh, look into the. Uh, let us explain the word ihsan. Ihsan comprises of four components. One is sincerity, sincerity of ikhlas. So ikhlas in niyat and ikhlas in uh, and uh, akhlaq. These two is important. First component of ihsan. Second component of ihsan is completeness. We must uh, we must do it completely, not partially done. Okay. Third component of Ehsan is excellence. We must do things in the best possible manner. Excellence. And fourth component of Ehsan is correctness. Correctness is doing things in the right way. In the right way. So when we apply this Ehsan, last time we if we can recall. When we, when we study the first hadith of, uh, of Imam Nabibi, first hadith is talking about Innamal Amalu bin Niyat. Innamal Amalu bin Niyat. We, we study that when we make a Niyat for a good thing, we get one reward. And when we do the action according to a Niyat, we get, get a reward of seven to seven hundred times. So, for niyat there is a reward, and for the righteous action there is a reward. But for for niyat, reward is one. For action, reward is seven to seven hundred times. What does it mean, seven to seven hundred times? It is because of this. This multiplication is actually caused by ihsan. So it depends on how much ihsan we put inside the action. According to that, our reward increases. So that is why we compare reward as the uh, roof of the house of Deen. Roof of the house of Deen. That uh, uh, that uh, Ihsan makes our action complete or perfect. If we do some action without Ihsan, it is like doing a job partially incomplete. So let us let us go a bit further okay isan in action isan 
is done. So ASEAN is done in good manner that uh, that encompass uh, that uh, cover correctness and completeness and excellence. We look at the verse two. Allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata li yabluakum ayyakum ahsanu amala. So again, ahsanu amala. So this uh, this verse is talking about what Allah wants to test us. Allah wants to test us which one of us is based in action by creating death and life. Okay, so what does it asanu amala means? Asan is applicable to all amal. So the concept is asan is applicable to all action. It could be not only limited to righteous action. It could be applied. It could be applied to neutral action. Neutral action means mupa. Mupa action means like we have. We sometimes we we uh, we wear shoe. We eat. We drink. We sleep. And we do so many activity, daily activity in our uh, everyday life. All this action has got nothing to do with uh, Sharia. It has no effect. It doesn't earn you any any uh, any rewards or it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't cause you any harm but when you apply isan in this muba job you can apply isan in this muba job and then this muba job become uh, it turn into ibadat so how to apply isan in muba job so follow the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we do our normal daily activity with a proper niya and follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we apply Ihsan in it. And then this normal Mubajab is become Ibada. So our reward is multiplied, our reward is multiplied. So I think uh, I, I'm going fast and I think if I try to finish this hadith, it will take a long time. I think we stop here until the Ihsan in action and the next week we'll continue further like our Isan in uh, uh, in uh, slaughtering, which has been mentioned in this hadith, Isan in jihad and so on, and Isan in everyday life and and uh, and few of the ayat, and then we'll complete this hadith in the uh, next week. So there are some uh, there is some special prayer that we need to make request from Nipolo. We think we live in a real world, but the world is a passing phenomenon, an illusion, a deception. We live in deception. We think we live in a real world. Every second, the world around us and we change imperceptibly. We do not realize the change. But everything is changing every moment. We see the change after maybe an hour, after maybe a day, after maybe a week or a month, or after maybe a year, we see more wrinkles in our face. Time is passing away. This world is real. The hereafter, sorry, this world is an illusion. The hereafter is real. And Quran is haq. And the sayings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are haq. Miracles and fulfilled prophecies help us to strengthen our realization about that. You see, Allah Ta'ala, it was Allah actually who enabled Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to prophesy. In the Quran, it is Allah who is doing it. In Ahadith, it is the inspiration of Allah Ta'ala. So through those prophecies and predictions in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala is giving opportunities to the disbelievers, especially the Quraysh, to realize that this is true. What is being said in the Quran and what is being said by my prophet are true. So he's showing miracles. We are not talking about miracles. We are talking about prophecies. And he's showing miracles and prophecies 
to simply tell the disbelievers that, you see, this is going to happen. This is happening and this is happening and this is happening. So whatever I'm saying will happen. You will die, you will be resurrected. There'll be hisab, accountability, and then uh, heaven or hell. Some of them believed, many didn't believe. It's only after the conquest of Makkah that uh, they came into Islam uh, en masse. But some died before that, like Abu Lahab. He got so much opportunity, but did not. So these, these miracles and prophecies, and again, we are talking about prophecies now, uh, were, were ways for people to bring Iman. And now everything is in front of us. So our Iman should be stronger than ever before. It was not, everything was not in front of them at that time. But everything is in front of us during our time. So we have all the opportunity in the world to, to uh, strengthen our realization about Islam. And it also give, gives us the opportunity to realize that what came from the mouth of Rasulullah is infallible. You know, let me give an example from, from my experience. There are so many ahadiths about uh, getting shifa from different uh, uh, duas. And I have been taking the help of so many of them. Last 52 years of my life, I have been suffering from continuous headache after reaction of injection. So I have to rely on that. Every day of my life, about four hours of meditation, does biyat. Zikir and Tilawar, every day, four hours. So I have a 20 hour life. So I, I, de I depend on, on Allah and his words and the dua from the mouth of his uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But even then, even after that, every day I, I, I rely completely and heavily. Even after that, you know, about some of the duas that we come to get to know uh, from um, uh, various hadiths. Sometimes I have this feeling, oh, will it work? Oh, will it work? And I give you a specific example. Very recently, uh, my wife got uh, through one of the social medias, maybe Facebook, a dua, uh, which uh, says that if you uh, say Bismillah, if you if you if, if there is some pain in your body, and if you touch that place and say Bismillah three times, and Auzubi Kudrat, Auzubi Lahi wa Kudratihi. Mincharema ajidu wa uhaziru seven times. And that's the best medicine against pain. So when I got that, and that was a few months ago, I did not have so much of faith in that. And I and I I, I tried that, but it did, didn't work. It didn't work with me in removing removing the pain. But after going through this series of presentations, believe me, my trust on what Rasulullah said, if it is specially authentic hadith, and this one that I mentioned is from Muslim, has solidified so much that I said to myself, if this is from Rasulullah and it is in Muslim, it must be true. And just in the last uh, two, three weeks, I tried that same dua and it worked. I, I, I had the pain again and again I tried, again it worked. I had the pain again and again it worked. So that is the benefit that I was talking about when I sent the, announce, uh, the announcement about this, uh, this uh, summary of what we presented, that this has had a tremendous impact on me. And may Allah Ta'ala uh, enable all of us to benefit from uh, what we hear in terms of the Quran and Hadith. So uh, first and foremost, you know, Three brothers have lost their near ones. 
Rabiulazam, 17th batch, uh, Papu, <clears throat> brother of Nipolo. His father in law passed away, uh, Janab Muhammad Sayyid, Sayyid, Sayyid Zaman, after a uh, stroke, Iftikharul Haq. Uh, I forgot the batch. I didn't write down the batch. He passed away last week. And uh, I think if the Karul Haq is the uh, 21st batch. And Farooq Hassan, also from 21st batch, his mother passed away two days ago. May Allah Ta'ala uh, forgive their punishment in the grave and make their grave a garden of Jannatul Firdos and uh, enable them to enter Jannatul Firdos. We'll pray for them. And uh, uh, I request you to pray for my batchmate, Farooq Amin, who is suffering after, uh, after a stroke in, uh, some 20 years ago. Um, and he's, he's suffering. I, 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 I'm very sorry I forgot to include him in our prayers, though I remember him on a daily basis in, our, in my prayer. And uh, we pray for Amir Hossein, he's suffering. Mrs. Maskura Ayub, uh, wife of Lutfi Ayub of second batch, Captain Zaman, fourth batch, Abul Barkat, sixth batch, Mrs. Mahfuz Reza, wife of Mahfuz Reza from sixth batch, Nuri Alam Siddiqui, may Allah Ta'ala grant him complete shifa. He's not in, in any grave illness. Uh, he's just uh, apprehensive about some finding in his body that will be tested later on. Abdul Rauf, uh, may Allah Ta'ala grant him complete shifa. Romel, uh, Saif's father-in-law, Saif from 19th batch, Jahangir from 24th batch, may Allah Ta'ala grant him complete shifa. He has kidney problem and uh, pretty serious. A wife of him, Rose, who is uh, undergoing cancer treatment, breast cancer. Mrs. Habibullah, wife of our English teacher, uh, Habibullah Sar, Amirul Faisal, who suffered two strokes and is uh, suffering from the effect of the second stroke for the last uh, six, seven years. And uh, we pray for the father of Zakaria from 47th batch, who is undergoing uh, uh, dialysis treatment, uh, but is not recovering. Uh, we pray for the mother of Firoz Siddiqui, Firoz of 16 batch, and uh, a number of brothers uh, are, uh, have, uh, have had COVID, they are recovering. May Allah Ta'ala grant them complete recovery. Uh, Abdurrahman, Abid, 17 batch, Jihad uh, in Los Angeles, Habib, 20th batch, Sadat, 21st batch, Saif, 19th batch, and his, and his family. And uh, uh, we pray for Muqaddam and his uh, family. Muqaddam uh, found that he has COVID yesterday. I think yesterday he found he has COVID. And uh, his wife already uh, is recovering from COVID. All indications say that she had COVID. So Muqaddam, uh, found out today that he has COVID. So he has request, requested for your, for your prayers that he recovers completely. This is his uh, second attack. First time was uh, uh, a little over one and a half years ago. And uh, we pray for the father of Abir from 28 batch who is undergoing uh, kidney dialysis. Uh, and we pray for uh, the surgery of Abdul Rashid of sixth batch. And the surgery will take place uh, end of this month. And any other brother uh, whose name I have not mentioned because I do not know, uh, we, we include him in uh, our prayers. So if the Karul Hawk is 21st batch, his father passed away last week. So we pray for everybody. Allah, uh, we uh, for the for the deceased ones. I request that we all recite Surah Fatiha once and Surah class three times. 
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین ایا کا نابد و ایا کا نستعین اہدن السراط المستقیم سراط الذین انعمت علیہم غیر المفتوب علیہم ولتوانین آمین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کنہو اللہ احد اللہ السمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکن اللہ کفوان احد بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کنہو اللہ احد اللہ السمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکن اللہ کفوان احد بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کنہو اللہ احد اللہ السمد لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکن اللہ کفوان احد اللهم آمین اللهم صلی اللہ سیدنا محمد جز اللہ ونہ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماہو آفلو را الہ الا اللہ العالم الكریم سبحان اللہ رب العرش العظیم والحمدللہ رب العالمین سالوکا موجبات رحمتك و زائم مغفراتك و غنیمت من کل بیرو و سلامت من کل اسم لا تدالنا زمبن اللہ غفرته و لا حمن اللہ فرشته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا دينا إلا كزيته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته ولا مظلوما إلا نصرته ولا مسلما إلا رحمته ولا حاجة هي لك رزا إلا كزيته يا رحم الراحمين يا رحم الراحمين يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بك من شر ما استعزاك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت المستعان وليك الملاك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ربنا اللهم اغفر لي والوالدنا وجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات لا يحيى منهم ولا أمات إنك منجب الدعوة برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لي أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أفز أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أهدي أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واهد الناس جميعا ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا وقتنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحمل لا ما لا تؤكت لنا به وأفوانا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانسرنا للقوم الكافرين ربنا إننا سمينا منادي أينا دي للإيمان أن أعنموا بربكم فأمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا ربنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا ربنا فاغفر لنا زنوبنا وكفر لنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم أنت سلام ومنك سلام وتباركت يا ذو الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنا إلى ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أسألك الهدى والتكا وفافا والغنى اللهم اهتنا واهتبنا واهتنا سجميا ربي أني مثان يدور وانت أرحم الراحمين ربي أنزل لي منزل مبارك وانت خير المنزلين ربي رحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنت من الظالمين والله تمي أما درك جاكي شو أمول قرار توفيق دي سوى الله بكتي قطب هبي تار بول فانتي شنكشو دون قرار تمار شاهي دور باري قبول قرار نيو الله तुम्हें आमदर के जाके छु आमल करे तो फिर दिए सो समस्ती को तो भाभे तार भूल भ्रांति शंक्षुधन करे तुम्हारे शहीद और बारे को भूल करे नहीं वाला एवं तार बूझ आमदर के दियो वाला अमरा अनेक किस्म जानी अम्म ऐसा ने शोभा शिक दुनिया दिख दे शिक्षित हो किंतु तुम्हारे शमंदे अमरा अग्गो � सृष्टो जगत शमंदे आम्रा अग्गो आमा परोकाल शमंदे आम्रा अग्गो अल्लाह तुम्ही आमदेर आमदेर ज्ञान दान करो अल्लाह इलमें शाते जुरे रखो अल्लाह मृत्यु पर जन्तो इलमें शाते जुरे रखो अल्लाह आमले शाते जुरे रखो ईमान मजबूत करे दाव प्रतिटा दीन आमल सुंदर करे दाव प्रतिटा दीन अल्लाह ओ अल्लाह अमादेर जीवनेर उद्देश्य बुझार तोफिक दान करो अल्लाह एवं इस्लाम में पूरा पूरी दाखिल हो और तोफिक दान करो अल्लाह 
ও আল্লাহ তুমি বলেছ মুসলমান না হয়ে কবরে না যেতে আল্লাহ প্রবেশ না করতে আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে ইমানদার করে মোমেন করে কবরে তুমি ডাক দিও যখন তোমার সন্তুষ্টি আমরা অর্জন করতে পারি আল্লাহ এই জন্য অনেক মাসুল দিতে হবে আল্লাহ সেই মাসুল দেওয়ার তৌফিক আমাদেরকে দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার প্রতি প্রতিটা দায় দায়িত্ব পালন করার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার বান্দাদের প্রতি প্রতিটা দায় দায়িত্ব পালন করার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ তার আগে আমাদের তো আমরা জানি না যে আমাদের দায় দায়িত্ব কি সেটা জানার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ তো আমরা যেন সবসময় এলেমের সাথে এবং আমলের সাথে জুড়ে থাকতে পারি আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে প্রত্যেকটা আমল সেভাবে করার তৌফিক দান করো যেভাবে করলে পরে তোমার সন্তুষ্টি আমরা পেতে পারি এবং কেবল মাত্র তোমার সন্তুষ্টির উদ্দেশ্যে যাতে আমরা আমল করতে পারি তোমার ভালোবাসা অন্তরে নিয়ে তোমার হাবিবের প্রতি ভালোবাসা অন্তরের মধ্যে নিয়ে আল্লাহ এখলাসের সাথে খালেস নিয়তে যাতে করতে পারি আল্লাহ এবং তোমার বান্দাদের প্রতি কত অন্যায় অবিচার করেছি আল্লাহ বিভিন্ন সময় আল্লাহ জেনে না জেনে জেনেও করেছি না জেনেও করেছি আল্লাহ তুমি তাদেরকে খুশি করে দিও আল্লাহ যাতে তারা আমাদেরকে মাফ করে দেয় আল্লাহ না হলে আমরা তো ধ্বংস হয়ে যাব আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে মাফ চাইলে তুমি মাফ করো বলে শুনেছি তোমার হাবিবের কাছে হাবিবের হাবিব হতে আল্লাহ কিন্তু তোমার বান্দারা তো মাফ করবে না তুমি যদি তাদেরকে তাদের অন্তরে না ঢেলে দাও তুমি যদি তাদেরকে খুশি করে না দাও আল্লাহ তারা আমাদের মাফ করবে না আল্লাহ এবং আমাদের আমরা ধ্বংস হয়ে যাব আল্লাহ ভবিষ্যতে যাতে তাদের প্রতি দায়ী দায়িত্ব পালন করতে পারি পুরাপুরি ভাবে সেই তফিক তুমি দান করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ আমাদেরকে সুন্দর গুণাবলী দান করো আল্লাহ হুসনে আখলাক যার মাধ্যমে আমরা তোমার বান্দাদের প্রতি দায় দায়িত্ব পালন করতে পারি এবং তোমার প্রতি দায় দায়িত্ব পালন করতে পারি আল্লাহ এবং তাদের প্রতি যে আমাদের পৌঁছে দেওয়ার কথা আল্লাহ তোমার বাণী পৌঁছে দেওয়ার কথা একটা আয়াত জানলেও পৌঁছে দেওয়ার কথা সেটা আমরা বুঝতে পারি নাই আল্লাহ এবং সেটা পালন করতে পারি নাই সেটা পালন করার তৌফিক দান করো না হলে তোমার কাছে আমরা দায়ী থেকে যাব তুমি আমাদের শ্রেষ্ঠ নবী হিসাবে আখ্যায়িত করেছো আল্লাহ সেই কাজ তো আমরা করি নেই আল্লাহ কিভাবে তোমার সামনে দাঁড়াবো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে তুমি আমাদেরকে সেসব আমল করার তৌফিক দান করো ইমানের পরে সেসব আমল করার তৌফিক দান করো যে আমল করলে পরে তুমি সন্তুষ্ট হবে আল্লাহ এবং আমরা তোমার সামনে দাঁড়াতে পারবো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের আমাদের সাথে সাক্ষাৎ করার জন্য উৎসুক থাকবে আল্লাহ সেরকম তফিক সেরকম আমল করার তফিক দান করো আল্লাহ এবং শয়তানের থেকে প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে শয়তানের ধোকার থেকে প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ এবং এবং আমাদের নফসের তারণা সব সময় লেগে আছে আল্লাহ তুমি তার থেকে আমাদেরকে আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ এবং দুনিয়ার আকর্ষণ এবং চাকচিক্য আমাদেরকে হাতছানি দিচ্ছে প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ এবং মানুষের মধ্যে যে শয়তান লুকায়িত তারাও সেই মানুষরাও আমাদেরকে খারাপের দিকে তোমার হুকুম অমান্য করার জন্য আমাদেরকে ডাকছি আল্লাহ তাদের তাদের থেকে আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ এবং হাত ধরে আমাদেরকে নিয়ে চলো নিয়ে যেও জীবনের যাত্রায় আল্লাহ এক মুহূর্তের জন্য ছেড়ে দিও না আল্লাহ এবং যখন তুমি সন্তুষ্ট থাকো তখন কলেমার সহ আমাদেরকে পৃথিবীর থেকে নিয়ে যেও শয়তানের শেষ চেষ্টা ব্যর্থ করে দিয়ে আল্লাহ যাতে করে তোমার তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার পেতে পারি কবরে এবং হাসারের ময়দানে এবং কুলসিরাত পার হতে এবং বিনা হিসাবে জন্নাতুল ফেরদোসে দাখিল হতে আল্লাহ আমরা যা কিছু আমরা যা কিছু পাঠ করেছি আল্লাহ তার স্বভাব তুমি পৌঁছে দিও জনাব মোহাম্মদ সৈয়দুজ্জামানের কাছে এবং ইফতেকারের পিতার রুহের কাছে এবং ফারুক হাসানের মাতার রুহের কাছে তুমি পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ এবং আমাদের আপনজন প্রিয়জন নিকটজন তোমার হাওয়ালাই আছে আল্লাহ কবরের মধ্যে এবং হাসারের ময়দানে এবং কুলসিরাত পারি দিতে এবং এবং বিনা হিসাবে জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসে দাখিল করে দিও আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের কবর রাজা মাফ করে দিও আল্লাহ জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসের বাগান বানিয়ে দিও কবরকে নূর দিয়ে প্রশস্ত নূর দিয়ে পরিপূর্ণ করে দিও কবরকে প্রশস্ত করে দিও এবং জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসের বাগান বানিয়ে দিও আল্লাহ আসরের ময়দান তোমার আরসের নিচে ছায়া দিও আল্লাহ এবং বিদ্যুতের গতিতে পুলসিরাত পার করে দিও এবং বিনা হিসাবে জান্নাতুল ফেরদোসে দাখিল করো আল্লাহ 
আমরা বিভিন্ন জন বিভিন্ন নেক হাজত নিয়ে হাত উঠিয়েছি আল্লাহ তুমি বাদশাহ তোমার কাছে ছাড়া আর কার কাছে হাত উঠাবো আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে ছাড়া আমাদের প্রয়োজন আর কার কাছে আমরা ব্যক্ত করব আল্লাহ ব্যক্ত না করলেও তুমি জানতে পারো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের প্রয়োজন মিটিয়ে দিও আল্লাহ পৃথিবীর বিভিন্ন আনাচে কানাচে বিভিন্ন মানুষ বিভিন্ন অসুখ অসুখ বিসুখ সুবিধা অসুবিধ অসুবিধার মধ্যে বিপদের মধ্যে জুলুমের মধ্যে প্রয়োজনের কারণে তোমার তোমার দিকে তাকিয়ে আছে আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের প্রয়োজন মিটিয়ে দিও তাদের বিপদ দূর করে দিও তাদের তাদের জুলুম দূর করে দিও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া আমাদের প্রয়োজন মিটানোর তো কেউই নাই আল্লাহ তুমি বাদশাহ তুমি তুমি মাফকারী তুমি ক্ষমতাশালী আমরা ফকির আমরা গুণাগার আমরা আমরা দুর্বল আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো করো আল্লাহ আমাদের একটা মাত্র জীবন এই একটা জীবনকে নিয়ে আমরা ছিনি মিনি খেলি আল্লাহ না বুঝে আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করে নাও যাতে করে এই একটা জীবন যাতে ধ্বংস হয়ে না যায় আল্লাহ এক একজনের এক একটা জীবন অত্যন্ত মূল্যবান জীবন আল্লাহ যেন ধ্বংস হয়ে না যায় আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তোমার কাছে সার মতো তোমার সার মতো চাইতে পারলাম না আল্লাহ তুমি তোমার সান মতো দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার তোমার সান মতো তোমার হেফাজত চাইতে পারলাম না আল্লাহ তোমার সান মতো তোমার হেফাজত দান করো আল্লাহ তোমার নবী যা কিছু চেয়েছিলেন আমরা তাই চাই তোমার কাছে আল্লাহ তোমার নবী যার থেকে পানা চেয়েছিলেন আমরা তার থেকে পানা চাই আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে রক্ষা করো আল্লাহ পৃথিবী অত্যন্ত মায়াময় আল্লাহ পৃথিবী অত্যন্ত স্লিপারি আল্লাহ পৃথিবী ধোকার জায়গা আল্লাহ যার মূল্য মাছির পর বরাবর না তার পিছনে আমরা এমন এমন ধোকার জায়গা যার মূল্য মাছির পর বরাবর না তার পিছনে আমরা কিরকম আল্লাহ কিরকম অন্ধের মতো ছুটে যাচ্ছি আল্লাহ এর থেকে এই এই ধোকার থেকে একমাত্র তুমি বাঁচাতে পারো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে বাঁচিয়ে নাও রক্ষা করে নাও আল্লাহ আমাদের জীবন যাতে নষ্ট হয়ে না যায় ধ্বংস হয়ে না যায় আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ আমরা চিরদিনের জন্য ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত হব আল্লাহ তুমি যদি বাঁচিয়ে না নাও আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া আমাদের কোন মাবুদ নাই কোন রক্ষাকারী নাই আল্লাহ কোন রহমতকারী নাই আল্লাহ কোন হেফাজতকারী নাই আল্লাহ কোন মাফকারী নাই আল্লাহ কোন হেদায়তকারী নাই আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের সবাইকে বাঁচিয়ে নাও আল্লাহ রব্বানা মুজিবুদ্দাহ <laughs> সুবাহিন <laughs> আমরা সামনের রবিবারে মিলিত হব একে অপরকে স্মরণ করাই যাতে আমরা তৌফিক পাই একে অপরের জন্য দোয়া করি যাতে ফেরেস্তাদের দোয়া পাই আল্লাহ তালা আমাদের সবাইকে কবুল করেন আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমত